Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Masters of the Universe Revelation He-Man, part of the new Masterverse toy line. That is right, my friends. This is the brand new 7-inch scale collector line from Mattel. They're calling it Masterverse because I believe the intent is that this line can contain various Masters of the Universe characters from all across the media, but they are starting out with characters based on the upcoming Netflix animated series, Revelation. And so today we're gonna be focusing on the most powerful man in the universe himself, He-Man. So, as you can see, the new Masterverse packaging is a window box, which has got a black and blue design on here. Uh, I've already taken a look at Battle Cat and Skele God, so we got a little look at this packaging. It is worth noting that all the basic figures are in smaller boxes uh, because of the smaller scale. Skele God is a larger deluxe figure, but otherwise the box design is basically the same. You have the new show logo at the bottom. Up here at the top where the Masterverse logo is, there's also some very cool kind of rune-like designs where you can see lots of neat little things worked in like uh, the Havoc staff skull is over here. Um, I believe I noticed, yeah, there's like a Horde logo in here. Like there's all kinds of little hidden details worked into this artwork that longtime Masters of the Universe fans will be able to pick out. I think that is pretty cool. Now, as you rotate this around to the side, you've got some really great artwork on the spine as well as on the back of the box. So the artwork is done by my old friend, Eamon O'Donoghue. Uh, I love seeing my old friends getting gigs like this where they get to do official artwork. It's so great. We, we were on a He-Man podcast together many, many years ago, and now he's doing this amazing artwork. So shout out to my friend, Eamon. Uh, really cool artwork. And I love that Mattel is continuing the tradition of putting awesome artwork on their Masters of the Universe packages because that feels so important to me. Now, down below that, we have a cross cell showing all four figures in the basic Wave 1 with He-Man, Mossman, Skeletor, and Evil Lynn. One thing I want to point out on here is that there's no bio on the back of this box like there was on Skeligod and Battle Cat, but I think that's because this is an international package. Uh, this is an early review sample from Mattel, so I need to put that out there. Very special thanks to Mattel, but I think they did send me a uh, an international review release because I noticed that we've got multilingual on the Netflix logo on the front and then we've got multilingual on the back as well and I think that's why there's no bio. So the standard US release will probably have a bio for He-Man like we saw with Skelegod and Battle Cat. So I also do want to show you guys real quick I love the artwork on the sides because it's got this great bookend feel. And if you've got all four figures and you line them up, it looks really cool seeing all four pieces of artwork lined up on the sides of the boxes. So really, really nice packaging. But let's go ahead and get this guy ripped out. We're going to get a close look at this figure. We're going to do lots of comparisons. Let's do it. All right, so we've got our brand new He-Man action figure outside of the packaging. If I bring in the tape measure here, you can see the figure stands right at seven inches tall. And as I mentioned, we're gonna do a lot of comparisons. We'll do that later on. I first wanna start just by going over the overall design of this action figure. Now, as I mentioned, this is based on the brand new Netflix animated series, Revelation. So he's supposed to kind of have that animated look to him, which is why I feel like he has a bit of a stylized look with his overall design. Um, one thing that really stands out about this to me is that the figure seems kind of tall and lanky. Um, his proportions are a little strange. Um, it's one of those things where, like, I always like toys that are based on a specific animation design, but maybe it's because we haven't really seen anything outside of the trailer yet, but he seems not quite exactly like what we see in the series, and the proportions just seem a little strange. The head seems small for his body, and I don't know, it's a little weird, um, at least to me. One of the other things that I don't really like is uh, the power harness seems small to me. 
Now, it's worth noting that there's some design differences here, but also some similarities. Of course, it's gray. It's got the red squares up at the top. They did replace the Iron Cross with the H symbol, but that's not new by any means. Mattel's been basically trying to make this He-Man's logo dating all the way back to 1984 when that was the logo on the Battle Armor He-Man figure. So, um, I like this fine. I think the symbol is really cool. But it's the armor itself. It just seems really small. And it's also only up on his upper body, um, which I don't know, that's not so bad, but there's just something weird about it where the straps seem really skinny and it just doesn't seem like it's proportioned correctly, but I don't know, maybe that's just me. Now, the armor is designed very similar to that of the vintage action figures, where you can just pop it straight off. So if you wanted to, it's very easy to remove this armor. Well, I say easy, but you just got to pull these straps through. There you go. And look at that. Now we've got ourselves a shirtless He-Man, if that's something that you want in your collection. But of course, that does allow for some mixing and matching, and we're going to play around with that a little later on in the video. Now, a lot of the same design elements are there straight off the vintage toy or even the Filmation animated series, uh, but there are some differences with the colors. First of all, this He-Man has got very yellow bracers on his wrists and a belt when normally He-Man has an orange belt and orange wrist bracers. So it's a difference of color there. Um, the one over here on the left is very large. Now, I understand because, um, you know, the vintage toy specifically did always have the larger sculpted one uh, on one one wrist so you can see it's a larger piece and the hands are removable on this for the swappability but you can see you can also remove this this is a separate sculpt so it actually can come off the figure if you do want to take it off of course then you don't have wrist bracers at all uh, but that also allows it to kind of swivel around and everything on there as well of course you got the nice furry shorts you got the furry boots nice straps honestly i like the paintwork in here you can see there's a bit of a wash um, that kind of makes it look a little dingy it brings out the details the boots actually look like they're leather there's like a leather like like texture in the sculpt, um, which I think the lights are reflecting off for you so you can see it there. I like that quite a bit. And the little subtle black wash kind of goes in all the little crevices there. So it looks really nice. You can also see that on the loincloth there as well. Uh, the plastic is decent. It feels similar to what we see on Origins. It's a little glossier, but it's not like super shiny. Some of that is just my lights reflecting off of it. He does feel a little bit more pale than what we've seen from He-Man in the past. Uh, you know, He-Man usually has a nice nice tan like a surfer's tan uh, but this he-man does have a bit more pale skin and uh, that's gonna bring us to the head sculpt which honestly I just don't know how I feel about it it's been one of my points of contention with this figure the whole time because I don't know he's got like a smile on his face and the shape of his hair I don't know something about it just doesn't make him look tough enough you know and I've always been very nitpicky with my He-Man. If you've watched lots of videos of me in the past talking about different He-Man figures, I always feel like it's hard to make a new He-Man look because I like the look of the vintage He-Man action figure so much that that head is He-Man to me. I'm fine with this being based on the animation, so that's totally cool. I just don't know if I'm in love with this particular look for He-Man's face. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk articulation, because that is one thing that Mattel is doing differently on this if we're comparing it to Origins or even Classics, which was the previous 7-inch collector line. So the heads are on the same type of ball joints that we've seen with Origins, which means the heads are removable. And again, we'll look at mixing and matching a little bit later. Uh, but you can pop that on and off very easily. That means the head can move all the way around, look left, look right. You got those ball-like joints at the shoulder, so the arms can go outwards, forwards, and backwards. You got swivels at the uh, bicep there. Uh, this is where we've got one new thing. We've got double jointed pinless elbows. So the double jointed elbows are brand new for Masters of the Universe toys. We've never really had that before. And as I just pop this wrist right out of socket. <laughs> So aside from the double jointed elbows, you can also swivel the wrist. You've got the hinge joints on the wrists there as well. I already showed you how those are removable. You can see the upper body uh, can rock all the way around as well as turn left and right. You can also turn the waist. It's just a regular cut there so it can turn left and right as well. You do have ball joints at the thighs. You got those like hinges there so the legs can go outwards. I will say that they're, the joints feel a little bit weird. Like when you try to move them back down, it almost like you really have to kind of put a little bit of pressure to get it locked straight down. It kind of like gets stuck outwards a little bit. You see that? I actually have to like 
push on there to get it to like lock into place. I don't know if there's like a ratchet in there or something. And maybe that's to keep the leg a little bit more uh, sturdy, uh, but that is worth noting on there. You've got a swivel at the thigh cut as well. Uh, double joints at the knees, which just like the elbows, that is brand new. So good range of motion there. You got the swivel at the boot cut and then the ankles can move forwards and backwards as well as rock side to side. Um, so the articulation is pretty good on this guy. It feels real sturdy on this particular he-Man action figure. I don't have the loose joints like I did with uh, Skella God. So this is really nice. He's sturdy and I think fans of super articulated figures are going to really like having the options to get a little bit more mobility out of some of his posing. All right, so I talked about the interchangeable hands. I do wanna bring those in here real quick because those are gonna go along with the accessories. Um, so right now on the figure, I've got both of his gripping hands, uh, but you do also have the option to swap the right hand with a closed fist for punching. So again, you can just pop the wrist right out of joint. And this wrist bracer is also a separate piece. So it just slides on and off the figure. Um, so now we've got a great punch, which is really cool for He-Man. I like that, especially with the old Filmation cartoon, like the punch at the screen was so iconic. Uh, but now we can have He-Man actually punching old Boneface, which is pretty great. Um, and then the left hand, you can swap out for this more open hand. Now, this hand is a little too wide open. I don't know if this is for slapping, <laughs> but I think what it's actually for is his shield. So here is the shield shield accessory. Um, this is very cool. Looks a lot like the shield from the vintage action figure, but it's a bit more rounded. Um, but you can see the way they've got the straps. They've got one that's a little bit larger and one that's a little tighter there. Um, so that's why I think that the open hand is perfect for this because the larger piece will slide right over to go across the wrist. You got the smaller one that goes right between his thumb and index finger. It actually holds on really nicely. So you've got He-Man that can hold onto a shield and that actually functions really good. I'm really impressed with that. And then we can't have He-Man without the Sword of Power. Uh, if you already watched my Skelegod review, this is the exact same sword that comes with Skelegod, uh, but it's really nice. I love the two-tone paint deco where the blade itself is painted with a metallic silver. The hilt is more of a flat gray. We got the brown wraps on there. I just like seeing the sword painted, which is not something we see too often through various He-Man toy lines. We did have it in classics, but not much outside of that. Um, you can put it in either one of his gripping hands, his left or his right, and they do get a really tight grip on the sword, which is something that I really like. Um, now, a few things I want to talk about with the sword. First of all, with the um, hinges on the wrists being on the front instead of on the sides, you can't get like the perfect sword aloft pose where the wrist can kind of hinge up and down so we can hold the sword, but you can kind of get it there. Um, it's basically about as good as we could always get it with the classics line and stuff like that. The other thing I want to talk about is there's no place to store the sword on the back. Um, there's no holder there to slide the sword through. So you'll have to do it old school like we did in the vintage toy line where you just slide the sword through the back of the armor. So I do kind of wish that there was an actual loop right here that the sword would fit in a little bit better better. Uh, but if you do want to put it on his back, you can always do it that way, just like we used to do when we were kids. Okay, so we're going to have a big old comparison time segment because there are a lot of different things I wanted to try and I wanted to show you guys. But let me start off with this. This is an image you guys might have already seen me post on social media. But what I did here is I tried to include all of the main He-Man action figures from the main Masters of the Universe toy lines from 82 all the way till now now so you can see how He-Man has changed over the years and has been represented throughout all of the different toy lines. I think it is important to show him standing alongside some of the recent figures, such as Masters of the Universe Origins, which is the other five and a half inch retail toy line on stores right now. Obviously, there's a huge scale difference between these guys. And I want to show them alongside Masters of the Universe Classics because a lot of people kind of looked at Masterverse as the spiritual successor to those. It's worth noting that he is a bit taller than those. Even though those are also 7-inch figures, they actually stand just shy of 7 inches. So he almost looks like he towers over them, even though he's not that much taller. Uh, but I wanted to put him in there with like the regular He-Man release, the Filmation version, just so you can see all of these lined up. 
And another thing I wanted to show an actual individual close-up of is this new one standing alongside the 2002 He-Man. Because I feel like a lot of the design elements of the Revelation He-Man, even with what I've seen in the animation, really reminds me of the 2002 reboot. And I think they definitely took some cues from that. So looking at those side-by-side -side is very interesting. Okay, so one of the things I want to show you guys is some of the mixing and matching that we can do. So I've got the Origins He-Man back in here. I mentioned the interchangeable heads earlier, and uh, I brought this up in the Skelegod video too, but in case you haven't seen that yet or in case you didn't know, um, the heads are on the exact same size ball joint between Origins and Masterverse. So if you wanted to, you could actually swap heads between the figures. Uh, I will say say that the Masterverse head is not too bad out of proportion with Origins. I don't know. It does look a little strange on the more bulky body. Uh, and then if we take like the Origins heads and put them on He-Man, I don't know. They kind of work, but also like the thinner body looks a little strange with them. But maybe you could do some fun mixing and matching if that is something that you want to do with these. Now, I wanted to also bring in Masters of the Universe Classics for the head swap trick here. Um, and this is the same thing I ran into with Skelegod, but the ball joint is sized differently on Classics than it is on Origins and Revelation. So even though the head sculpts are about the similar size, um, the Classics heads don't fit on the Revelations bodies very good. As you can see, the, the, the socket on the head is a bit too small to pop onto this. Now, if you do a little bit of work, maybe you could heat it up a little bit and pop it on there, but for the sake of just right out of the box, popping on and off, it does not work. You can see that it just doesn't fit there. Um, and then if we want to also take the Masterverse head, uh, you can put it on the Classics body. Uh, the skin tone super doesn't match. And also it is loose. You can see because the socket is bigger, it doesn't actually clip on. It just kind of rests there on top. But if you're a customizer, it might be good to know that you do have some posing options. One of the other things I wanted to do is I wanted to put like some of the different armor on the new Masterverse He-Man because I didn't really like the thinner straps. I thought about just switching it off of Origins, but the problem with Origins uh, armor is that it's designed where you actually have to remove his torso because it slides off the bottom of his waist. So I couldn't actually find a good way to get it on this figure because I couldn't slide it over his arms or his legs or anything like that. But I did take off the Classics armor here because that just pops right off and slides off there. So I kind of thought it was fun just to see what like the armor from Masters of the Universe Classics He-Man as well as the sword looks like on the Masterverse body. So, you know, if you've got a bunch of this stuff, there is some mixing and matching potential between different heads or different accessories. If you really want to just kind of go wild and see what kind of crazy things you can come up with for some different display options. Now, of course, I've already got and have already taken a look at Battle Cat from this line. So I had to get some great shots of this new He-Man riding on his steed. Um, that is such a big Battle Cat action figure that I still feel like the saddle isn't very good on it. Like, it's not a proper saddle fit. So um, the back is so rounded that He-Man's legs feel like they are very like separated apart, like sitting on his back. But this is what it looks like when you put He-Man on Battle Cat's back. I even was able to kind of get that like reared up pose using his tail as a tripod and putting He-Man on there. It's pretty fun. And just for fun, just to kind of show you guys compatibility, I did want to go ahead and also put the new Masterverse He-Man alongside the Masters of the Universe Classics Battle Cat. I actually feel like the size is a little bit better, but maybe that's just me. And I wanted to show them alongside the Origins Battle Cat that is also in stores right now to show you that Origins Battle Cat is a way too small <laughs> to be paired up with Masterverse He-Man. Okay, whew, I think I covered a lot with this, but I'm sure there's going to be other questions about compatibility with uh, different things that have come out in the past. But hopefully this helps to give you guys an idea of what to expect with this figure when you get it. Um, overall, you know, I am not entirely sure how I feel about the overall design of the figure. Now, I will say, I think the articulation is nice. I think everything as far as action figure functionality goes 
is really well done with this figure. It's the design itself that I'm not entirely in love with. Um, like I said, I still feel that he just looks weirdly disproportioned. I don't love the face sculpt. Those are all personal opinions though, so it might be totally different for you guys. I once again have to give a very special thanks to the folks at Mattel who sent this along early so we can get a good look at them outside of the packaging. I believe the way this is working, it's really weird, but all of the Wave 1 basic figures, which is He-Man, Skeletor, Evil Inn, and Moss Man, are going to be available first at Walmart this summer and then eventually open up to everywhere. And uh, Skelegod and Battle Cat are first at Target, so I don't know why they're splitting between the two stores. I don't like that, but the good news is that they will be available everywhere eventually. So eventually you'll be able just to pre-order these online if you want to. So uh, if you could be patient, I think there's going to be plenty of these to go around. Thank you guys so very much for watching this video. And until next time. The Toys of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe is available for pre-order now. This official guidebook is published by Dark Horse Books and features over 750 pages of photos and information on your favorite He-Man and She-Ra action figures. And don't miss out on the exclusive bundle pack available for pre-order now from PowerCon. This bundle includes the official guide as well as an exclusive character guide supplement that you won't be able to buy anywhere else. Don't miss out. You have the power.